thank you very much for this opportunity to speak today. Uh, before I begin, I just want to acknowledge that uh, the only way I'm uh, going to be able to handle any additional duties from the Premier's office is uh, because I have an Associate Minister now. So Brandy Payne's here, Associate Minister for Health. Uh, health is arguably one of the uh, most complex and uh, most important uh, ministries, I'd say, when uh, we ask Albertans why it is that they pay their taxes, it's often the top of the list. So certainly appreciate uh, so many uh, experts being here today with all of us. Off the top, I want to thank today's panelists for being a part of this event, and of course, those include Drs. Naylor, Price, Strauss, um, Kaboli, uh, Nali and uh, of course Andre Picard, Dr. Carl Knorr, President of the AMA, and Michael Gormley as well, uh, the Executive Director of the AMA. So I'd like to say thank you all for agreeing to be panelists today, and a special thanks to those of you who've traveled from other parts of our province and of Canada to be here for this important discussion. This forum is such a tremendous opportunity for us to bring together experts, not only from Alberta, but across our country. And the topic could not be more timely. The role of physicians in our healthcare system as stewards of resources is so crucially important, not only to the care provided to individual patients, but an overall leadership and influence in our evolving healthcare system as it continues to transform. How we pay physicians and surgeons and how we support them in being stewards of our resource is absolutely essential to improving and sustaining Alberta's healthcare system. And since becoming Minister of Health, I've had the opportunity to travel across the province and meet with a wide range of health professionals working in many different settings. There are incredible doctors doing amazing work right across our province. The dedication, vision, and leadership that they show um, is nothing short of outstanding. So to all of the physicians here today, and to those of you who've tuned in online, thank you for the work that you do, and thank you for participating in today's discussion. I also want to take a moment to recognize a wide range of different organizations and individuals here today. Nurses, clinicians, academics, pharmacists, administrators, researchers, public sector employees, just to name a few. Your participation in this event speaks volumes about the importance of this discussion. It underscores the ties between physicians and other health professionals. And it shows how far we've come in understanding the need to deliver health care in a team-based environment rather than in, in a isolated professional silos. So to all health professionals here today, thank you for taking part in this discussion. Our government has now been in office for about nine months. Already we've made some much needed improvements to health care delivery, stabilizing the system, protecting pub public frontline care, and putting a new governance board in place for Alberta Health Services. These have been positive steps forward, but we know much more does need to be done. Our overarching goal as a government is to make sure Albertans get the right care and the right place at the right time by the right provider. And of course, to make this possible, we need the right information. This vision has to be implemented with a good understanding of the patient's journey throughout the different areas of the health system and throughout their lifetime. Patients, citizens, need to have an ongoing relationship with the health system not simply a collection of individual encounters. They need to be partners. The way we fund and organize healthcare services must be based on this vision. However, if our government is going to achieve this vision, we first need to put the healthcare system on a solid fiscal footing. Healthcare currently accounts for a significant portion of the government's overall budget, approximately 45% here in Alberta. This is a huge amount and it is growing. For the past 20 years, spending on health care in Alberta has been going up by an annual average of nearly 6%, well beyond that of inflation and population growth. And this spending growth has landed Alberta at the top of the scale in Canada in almost every category of health spending. The Canadian health spending average is about $3,400 per person. In Alberta, we're spending more than $4,800. At this rate, in the next 20 years, we'll be spending more than 60% of the government's overall budget on health care. This is simply not sustainable, nor right. At the same time, while our health care spending is among the highest in the country, our province is not always getting the best health outcomes for our health dollars. 
In some areas, our healthcare system performs very well compared to other provinces. And in some other areas, we're particularly weak. And in many, we're in the middle of the pack. Given how much money is spent on healthcare in Alberta, the health co outcomes in our province can and should be better. But let me say, Alberta's healthcare workers are doing outstanding work. I've seen it firsthand, both of the health as a health minister and as someone who's used the healthcare system, both personally as well as helping the people I love through their journeys. In fact, it's the frontline health professionals who are leading the way in coming up with better and more innovative ways to deliver healthcare and often at lower costs. As a government, we need to support these efforts and make sure that the system is designed to support frontline innovation. Yes, we need to address unsustainable spending, but we need to do it wisely in ways that support ongoing stability within our healthcare system. The current fiscal climate in Alberta is extremely serious. You all read the headlines every day. Government revenues have declined dramatically and show no signs of recovering soon. We simply cannot continue increasing spending on health care in this province the ways that we've done in the past. Our challenge is to respond to the fiscal situation without a knee-jerk reaction, but with care and with wisdom. Yes, we could take some immediate steps to save money in the short term. But we can also take bold and meaningful actions to not only curb health care costs, but to do it smartly. We can do it in ways that lead to short-term savings and better position the health care system to deliver good quality care. And I know it sounds like a challenge, reducing costs while improving care, but we know it can be done. And it's already been done in certain pockets of our health care system. And it's been done in other provinces. And it's been done in other countries. We need to learn from these examples and make meaningful reforms right here in Alberta. We're here to talk about doctors as stewards of our health care system. Doctors are and will be leaders in reform. Many of you have been deeply involved in developing these plans, but have been frustrated by the lack of action and confusing initiatives by previous government. For far too long, Alberta's healthcare system has been subject to privatization schemes, restructuring initiatives, uncertain budget planning, random investments in pet projects, and an on again, off again plan for reform. Instead, what you're going to see from our government is clear, carefully considered actions that lead to tangible implementation steps. The other thing you won't see from our government are rash decisions and cutbacks. So let me be clear. We are not talking about cutting overall spending. We are not talking about taking money out of the healthcare system. But we are talking about slowing the rate of growth in spending. And we're talking about doing it carefully based on the best available evidence and we will work closely with healthcare leaders and experts like those of you here in this room. So how to proceed? We need to start with clear evidence. Everything we do needs to be based on the best available data, analytics, information. My ministry has assembled uh, information on Alberta's health care delivery compared to other provinces. And you've seen that data on the screen this morning. We also need to have an open conversation with key leaders in the health system and all Albertans listening carefully to their concerns, comments, and solutions. Today's event is part of that process. My ministry officials have also been meeting with key sectors of health stakeholders for the last few months, outlining the challenges and discussing solutions. Some of you may have been part of those discussions, and I can tell you that the response so far has been overwhelmingly positive. There are health leaders and innovators throughout this province who are ready and willing to help make the system more fiscally sound while improving the quality of care we all receive. And we are going to work closely with you. I alone cannot strengthen the health care system, but we are going to strengthen the health care system together. It won't be easy. There will be difficult decisions and hard transitions, but I believe we can begin to take steps that bring spending in line without impacting service delivery. Other provinces have done it, and so can we. One of the areas we will need to focus on is physician compensation. Alberta is fortunate to have some of the best doctors in Canada. 
I think most of us would agree that the model our province uses to pay doctors, however, is expensive, outdated, and doesn't support the efforts of doctors to provide the best care possible. The Federal Advisory Panel on Health Innovation, chaired by Dr. Naylor, released its final report last year and highlighted the need for change in how physicians are paid and in the role that physicians play in resource allocation. The report says, there is no doubt that a great many physicians are willing and more than able to make a lar much larger leadership role in changing the healthcare system for the better. However, physicians cannot readily join other health professionals in leading the system while standing guard in front of their traditional budgetary silos and related models of remuneration. This is a very challenging statement. But to me, it is encouraging to have met so many physician leaders across the province who are willing to explore new and better approaches to compensation. Across Canada and around our world, new and better models for paying doctors have been developed. These methods are not only less expensive, but encourage doctors to work more closely with other health professionals and reward them not just for seeing a patient, but for the quality of care that's provided. And we can learn from these examples. We need to explore ways to pay doctors for working as part of a team of different health professionals and meeting patient needs, as well as supporting doctors in their efforts to take a more comprehensive and preventative approach to providing care for all of their patients. And we also need to allow doctors to provide care in ways that work best for their patients, including phone calls, telehealth, email, and house calls. This will involve reimagining the relationship that physicians have with the healthcare system and with their patients as partners. There is no magic solution, and we will need a mix of different tools. If done right, Alberta will be able to continue offering attractive compensation for doctors while also supporting and rewarding doctors' efforts to improve healthcare access and quality. And beyond that, changing the way we pay doctors would have a ripple effect on the entire healthcare system. It would help improve access to high quality primary care, which would reduce unnecessary hospitalizations and emergency room visits. And it would lead to a more team-based care approach, which would increase patient satisfaction and allow for more timely access to care when it is needed. We've already been discussing these issues with the Alberta Medical Association for several months. And the AMA has been an incredible partner. I want to honor uh, and acknowledge Dr. Carl Knorr and past president Richard Johnston. They've shown real wisdom and a willingness to roll up their sleeves and work with us to begin tackling these very complex challenges. Like our government, the AMA wants to improve and modernize physician compensation, and they want to do it right. We want this positive working relationship with the AMA to continue in the weeks and months ahead. It's true that these are very big challenges and they will not be quickly or easily solved. But I firmly believe that by working together in collaboration that these outcomes are attainable. And that's exactly what we'll be doing in the weeks and months ahead. Ladies and gentlemen, again, I want to thank you all for coming together to take part in this dialogue. It's exciting to see so many people from across the province and from all sectors of the healthcare system be part of this discussion. The deliberations this morning have no doubt brought forward some challenging issues and some uh, innovation and interesting solutions. And I hope that the rest of the day proves equally informative and I look forward to seeing the results. Most importantly, I hope that this will not be a one-off event, but will lead to further paneling and dialogue that generates real change, change that will ultimately benefit Albertans. And I want to welcome your ongoing participation in this process. My Deputy Minister, Dr. Connell Amrine, and other department officials are here today and more than willing to hear from you, and they want your ideas and suggestions. Together, we have a great opportunity in Alberta to move forward in health system transformation, and we need physician leadership and collaboration with all partners in making this happen. Again, I want to thank the distinguished panel members for being here today. And I want to thank the O'Brien Institute for, and the Institute for Health Economics for organizing this event. Thank you, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your day.